So this is recrystallized silicon carbide. This is the next level in ceramic combustion chambers. What's going on, fellas? Just wanted to share my latest shipment with you guys. Got a new order in. I'm continuing my research on this silicon carbide. These right here are called recrystallized silicon carbide. And they have an operating temperature of 3000 Fahrenheit, 1650 Celsius. That's their meaning they can run like that for a year straight without any problems whatsoever. This here is a simple silicon carbide version. And they are rated at 2500 degrees operating temperature. This is your average forge temperature or foundry temperature that you'd want to melt cast iron with. These are okay for that, but for the more brutal events, when you got to take drastic measures, these right here are probably going to be the hottest ones yet. My next move on these is I'm going to order some that are a little bit thinner. I think this is a little bit too thick for max temperature burners. For a burner to actually hit the uh, 3000 Fahrenheit, you have to get the combustion chamber to glow white hot. There really is no situation without oxygen being added that you can get a 3000 degree flame um, without making the combustion chamber white hot itself. In all my testing, even though when you read in science books about the adiabatic flame temperature of different fuels, you'll never achieve that by simply sticking a thermal couple in the flame. That's just not how it goes. But this is what we got going on here. I only got five of each of the silicon or the recrystallized silicon carbide. These are just the regular silicon carbide, the small ones which is this right here. These are the micro silicon carbide. These things sold out so fast, I didn't even have time to really test them. So I decided to go ahead and um, just get a whole shipment of 30 of them. I'm gonna have to get another shipment of these as well because I have sold out completely of these also. I've got, actually I take that back, I've got like four of them left over there, or two, and a couple of the big ones. I was gonna do some experiments with using these as crucibles. I might even have this company make me some of these. And the reason being is that the thermal conductivity of silicon carbide is off the charts compared to, say, a salamander. You know, these are great and all, but they're horrible conductors of heat. They, they're just, they, they can't touch this by any means. So... I did break one of these when I filled it with metal, but I think that's because I just heated it too quickly. But um, that's another experiment that I have going on with these things. This is 3000 degree refractory, just a plug that I threw in there. Because if these tests work, I'm gonna start selling crucibles made out of this stuff also. More likely this stuff right here. Because as I said, this stuff conducts heat far better than ceramic does i don't have the specifications right now i'll get that i just wanted to share with you guys who really pay attention to what i got going on what's happening over here i'm so busy that i just haven't had time to post anything um, i've been doing stuff like this right here this right here is a, a two megawatt burner that i'm working on for my guy jake who I believe is a project manager at a kiln facility. I'm not sure what type of kilns they run, but they have these preheat burners that they use. And he's looking for something that can run natural gas and diesel fuel. So we're gonna have a triple nozzle setup here. Just doing some welding of this. So I've just been too busy to even mess with any of this stuff, but um, that's what I got going on. In the next couple of days, hopefully, we're going to see one of these things in action. This is the recrystallized. Man, they're really bringing the bling here. I could wear one of these on a gold chain. But, 
sorry if I disappointed anyone and not fired one of these up. Another project that I've been working on is uh, a little bit of protection. It's getting pretty crazy out there, you know. What we've got here is aluminum spheres. Now this is what they look like when you get them. They're polished, they're very slippery, and uh, they tend not to work too well in, in one of these devices right here because they just don't feed well. They want to fly out of the, uh, the thing here that I can't say or else I'll get axed by the New World Order. But, um, you know, lethal's not always the answer. Maybe you got 10 guys outside your house, you just need to whoop their ass. This will whoop 10 people's ass for sure. Don't ever shoot anybody in the head with that thing, obviously. But, uh, you know, for people out there who maybe can't get a firearm, or even people who do have firearms, like I said, lethal's not always the answer. What if you just got to smack them up a bit, and you don't want to go to prison the rest of your life, you know? This right here might just get them to run off and no cops called. Nowadays, you call the cops because someone broke into your house or something, they take you to jail because the Democrats are running the show. This right here is what um, is on the market right now. These are glass breaker rounds. And uh, they basically uh, are only sold to law enforcement. And they're basically aluminum rounds with a special coating on them that keeps them from being too slippery inside of magazines. Because like I said, if you load a clip full of these, the second you take your finger off, they'll all shoot right out of the clip. They also don't cycle well inside the machine because they're so slippery. There's just something about it where it wants to shoot the whole clip right out of the gun. They just all want to just brrr. So what you have to do is you take these um, polished aluminum spheres here and you soak them in um, sodium hydroxide solution or potassium hydroxide with water. I make a, a pretty hot solution. I'll take uh, some stuff like this right here and dump it in a bowl about like that. And I'll put like uh, maybe three or four ounces of this stuff in there and it'll bubble and fizz like crazy. And I only let it go for like 20, 30 seconds till it just starts to froth over. And then by doing that, it gives those spheres just enough friction to cycle properly inside of this, uh, this peacemaker here. That's a peace machine. I'm definitely not into violence, so that's not my purpose. Here's the problem I have, though. I had to buy enough to take on an army to do this. You can't just buy one of these things. You can. You can't just buy one of these boxes, but this is what they look like when you get them. If you have a hopper, uh, a system with a hopper, you're in there. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about selling these, though. I don't want the wrong people getting their hands on them. Certainly not the enemy. But uh, I don't know, maybe some of you guys who know me want to talk to me. That's quite a few of them there. That's several boxes of uh, those things. But let me show you something funny. I tried to buy this one here from California. I contacted this company. Um, I guess I should tell you this first. These right here are about $3.25 a piece. Very, very expensive stuff right here. So, not a way to go. This right here, they quoted me $27 for that thing. Crazy, man. 27 bucks? Like, unreal. So that's my solution to that problem. These are the glass breakers for the RAP4. And, uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing today is making peacemakers. So, there you have it. That's all I got, fellas. I've got nothing for you today. Too busy to do anything exciting. Peace to all my peeps.